Hello everybody and welcome back to a vlog. I'm so excited for today's vlog. This was something that had kind of been like, and I'm putting this down because it's jingling. This was something that had been spewing in my brain, spewing, what kind of word is that? It had just been something that was in my brain for a while because some of my favorite videos on YouTube are that if you liked this book, try this book. I've done a couple different variations of this. I've done the traditional one, I've done an indie one, and I've done one that was just like, if you liked City of Brass, try these books. And I always have fun doing it, but I want to do some kind of vlog form of it. And so this little brainchild was figured out. In this vlog, you're gonna watch me read four books. I asked four of my booktube friends to give me a recommendation based on a book that I've read and enjoyed. So I got personal. If you liked this book, read this book. So that's essentially what just happened here. Let's let's start the video. I'm very excited to see if their comparisons match up and see if I like them. I did tell all my friends that I wouldn't be judging them too harshly. There's no like competition here, but that I did want to see if their like recommendations matched up. Like if the reasons why they told me it compares the other book matched up, but like there's no like winning or losing in this video. Let me know if you like this vlog. If you do, I'll probably do more and ask more booktubers to give me some recommendations, but it does require them to at least know my reading taste a little bit. So it's a little bit harder. So you won't be surprised at all by anyone you see in this video because a lot of them are on my channel quite a bit. They know what I like and what I don't like. And I'm just really excited to see what they pick for me. Let's get right into number one. Hello, Cassidy. So because you enjoyed The Ruin of Kings, Red Sister, and along the razor's edge. Wait, Kaylee's just pulling out like three you enjoyed. What is this? Like what? Those are like all favorites. Oh my god, this thing in my eyeball is really bothering me. Sorry, Kaylee. I am recommending that you read Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. So Nevernight has some similar writing quirks that The Ruin of Kings have. Of course, it has the footnotes in it, but beyond just the footnotes gimmick, I feel like the writing itself is a part of the plot of the story, which is interesting. Um, and I know something that we've been discussing recently is something we've both been enjoying in stories. That connection is also being made between Nevernight and Along the Fraser's Edge, again, with the actual writing of the story being part of the plot. However, I also think Eska and Mia are comparable characters in terms of their sassiness and brattiness. And then I also think Nevernight is comparable to Red Sister, of course, with the connection between the assassin schools being connected to religion and stuff like that. Um, but also Nona and Mia, I believe, are also comparable characters. So because of the writing style, because of the characters, and because of the general plot, I am hoping that you really enjoy Nevernight. <laughs> Kaylee did not come to play. She gave me three reasons why I'm gonna love this book. Because I love all of those books. Red Sister, one of my favorite books of all time. The Rune of Kings, I thoroughly loved. And Eska is like one of my favorite books of this year for sure. Like I love Eska's character. I also just love a school setting. I love assassins. I'm so excited for this one. I've been really nervous because if you guys know Mel from Melanor Reads, we agree quite a bit on our fantasy taste and I know Mel didn't love this series, but I will say I think Rune of Kings, Red Sister, and Eska, along the razor's edge, I always call it Eska. I enjoyed a little bit more than Mel all of those. I think I also enjoy just like the gimmick of footnotes a little bit more than Mel. So I am hoping that I really like this and that it's uh, one of the books that's like a little bit different for me and Mel's comparison. I hope I side more with Kaylee on it. I'm really excited for this one. People have been telling me to read Nevernight forever, but I've just been so scared of putting it off. I own the entire trilogy. So I am so excited to get to this one. Thank you, Kaylee. Initial thoughts on Nevernight, because I'm only 30 pages in, is I'm calling it- Ow! My bookmark just scratched me. I'm calling it five stars right now. I don't know what I did to the five star gods this year. Like, I'm having such a good reading year. I'm reading five star after five star after five star. Like, what- what did I do? Did I just, like, learn my reading taste this year or something? I, um... Uh, I'm loving it. I'm not complaining. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what this is about yet. 
I think I'm gonna wait till about the 100 page mark. I just wanted to give you my like initial thoughts. I decided to tab it. I'm also making a book diary for this series now, which is a spoiler vlog that my top tier patron has early access to. They're gonna get them as I read the books, but you guys on my YouTube channel will get it when I'm done the entire series. It's just been fun talking my thoughts through in that. But at this point, I just would like to say, like, J. Kristoff has, like, an interesting writing style. And it's taking me a lot of time to, like, read. Like, I, I typically read a lot faster than this. I think I read for, like, two hours. And I only got 30 pages in. I, was, I mean, I was annotating. It's just, like, I have to reread lines sometimes. I feel like I'm missing something. But I'm also, like, loving it. And I love his prose at the same time. So it's kind of, like, the most interesting thing like I already have so many tabs in here I have so many highlights and underlines like I'm really enjoying it um her scenes with her first like losing her virginity and her first blood I loved so much I thought they were done so well in the way they like mirrored each other and like I just like hope for more of things like that throughout it I know people don't like the footnotes in this they're not bothering me at this one in time I don't know if I think that they're necessary but I like them so it's not bothering me anyways I'll update you in a bit oh also I'm off to a photo shoot today and then I think I'm gonna go shopping because it's summer now and I definitely gained some weight in the last year so I think I need some new shorts and stuff and like summer clothes so I think I'm gonna go do that and I might have a little haul for you in a bit and I bought way too much stuff I, I'm a ginger so I don't like I need things to like cover myself in the summer because I, I sunburn a lot so I have like just like this linen shirt it's pink and white and striped stripes are really in that I thought was really cute I also just like love crewnecks and live in crewnecks and this crewneck is really cute I'm actually gonna put it on because I can't help myself so I'll be right back it's so adorable I really just love being comfy um, that is literally my style. I love that the comfy trend is in currently as well. So I bought like these cargo sweat shorts. Uh, I'm a sweat short girly. I love sweat shorts. I'm normally in them like crazy and I'm gonna wear them like rolled down like this. Just like a matching crop top with them and I think it's gonna be super cute. Just a baggy t-shirt because I also just love a really extra large baggy t-shirt. This one has cars. I tend to have a lot of car ones even though I don't race but I like the way they look. Um, more sweatshorts, but these are just like more like standard what I normally get, which are just like 80s short. And then like actually what I came in for is just like denim shorts that fit me now. So I have two pairs, a light wash and a dark wash, because none of my denim shorts fit me anymore because I'm lazy now. And then I went to Old Navy and I just got this cute t-shirt. Um, so it's not cruise on the back. I love a baggy t-shirt. This like, this gives me like dad style and I'm kind of, and I love that. This like long sleeve that says road tripping, simple living. It's so soft. And then these cute little blue bicycle shorts, but I do, I don't use them to work out in and they always are like compressed down here. So I am just gonna spend some time like stretching and breaking this seam. Um, that's my little trick because I like them to be looser on my thighs so that's what I do to them. Welcome to shopping with Cassidy. I need to update the non-spoiler vlog. What are you doing? I'm about 100 pages into Nevernight and at this point I'm really excited because we just hit the assassin school and I will say I was really into the first like 50 pages and then probably from 50 to 80 I kind of kind of dragged a little bit for me. The footnotes kind of became a little overbearing and I felt like they were taking up too much of the space on the page. Some of these footnotes are like half a page long and I just don't think that's necessary. Jay Kristoff also does a really good job of putting the facts you need about the world, at least so far I'm finding in the actual like writing style, not necessarily in the, the, the footnotes. The footnotes are just like extra, extra information that you could love and enjoy. A lot of it has a lot of humor and so I don't find the footnotes necessary and they are kind of taking away some of my enjoyment in the overall story when they are too long but not like ruining that I'm liking this book because I am liking the footnotes and I like most of them like when they're shorter I definitely like them but I definitely will say like if I continue to feel this way about the footnotes I don't think that this book can get five stars just because how do you give a book five stars when you want to skip over half of what's written in there because like the footnotes take up like a decent amount of space and I'm skimming them like I, I'm now skimming them because a lot of them are just information that I don't care about and I don't feel like it's necessary and I need so yeah I think um I, ha I hope my feelings change back to how I felt at the beginning about the footnotes so that I can give the book a five stars overall but 
Other than that, I don't really have much to say. I'm liking the humor. I'm excited for the school setting. And I do like all of our characters that have been set up so far. And I'm really intrigued in the magic system. Oh, and at this moment in time, I see all of Kaylee's comparisons. A little bit less Red Sister. Um, but I definitely see a lot about All Along the Razor's Edge and a lot of, um... The Course of Dragons series in just like the tones and the way it's written. Um, I think that both of those have more humor than Red Sister did, but uh, I think Mia will grow into a character that reminds me more of Nona. Because Esco reminds me of Nona, but I'm not sure Mia reminds me of Nona yet. I don't know if that makes sense. Okay, I have reached 50% of the book. I'm still really liking it. I think I'm sitting at a four star. I have issues with the footnotes. That's really my only issue. I have issues with the footnotes. And that's sad because that's gonna pull this book down to a four where like the actual story feels like a five, but I just keep being pulled out of the story by these footnotes that are useless. <laughs> like they do add world building, but in a way that reminds me of a textbook, not in a way that is like fun and riveting for me to read. A paragraph footnote in the middle of a sentence. So yeah, that's my biggest issue, but we are kind of in the school setting. I do kind of want it to like, get a move on. I need something to happen, but I think I just got there. So it is a little bit slower than I was expecting to. Other than that, I'm still really enjoying my time. I do like Mia as a character. She reminds me a lot of Eska. I don't know why, but she does a lot. So Kaylee did a really good job at like comparing these books. Cause like, I do see all of the comparisons. <laughs> I finished Nevernight and I'm giving this book four stars. I had problems with some of the pacing in this. I do felt like it was a little bit slow and we missed a lot of things that I wanted to see. I wanted to see Mia get better at her skills throughout the book instead of just being like told she got better. I really wish the school setting had really like let us see that through like training and hard work but it didn't really like the skills that she that we saw were like the poison one that she already excelled at when she entered the school so i really just wish we had seen her skills like slowly grow but instead we're just like told about like the swords and stuff like that and then i also just had problems with the footnotes i think that they didn't add enough to the story for me in terms of making them footnotes they were too long too clunky it took me out of the story i wish that they had been like just like put into the actual narrative style the actual like regular story instead of being like a note on the the end I have liked footnotes before, so it's like not against footnotes, and I liked any of the small footnotes that were just like funny. Like there's a lot about the boy that talks to his knife, and I liked those footnotes, but the footnotes that were half a page long, just like, that's not a footnote. It's not needed. Let's not. <laughs> and then other than that, what did I think about this? Um, yeah, I don't know. I just had some pacing issues, so that's why I didn't get five stars from me, but things I did like was Mia. I really liked her character. However, she's not as morally great as I think I was led to be. I don't think that she's an Eska or even like a Nona. She's like kind of there, but not really. She's like very loyal and she does a lot of the right things at times instead of like how I think about a morally great character, even though she is killing people. So she is morally great, but she's just like not as dark as I thought she would be and not as dark as I wanted her to be, if that makes sense. I love Mr. Kindly. He's funny. I'm a little scared with the ending and the new edition how that's going to handle and how that humor could get a little bit too much for me in the sequel. But at this moment in time, I do love it. I love Mr. Kindly's humor. I love the shadow magic, all of that stuff. So I had a really fun time with this book. I liked the magic a lot in this. I actually really liked that all the magic had consequences. Um, there was always a, if you did this, then this happened. And I thought that that was really interesting and I really liked that. Now for the terms of Kaylee and giving me this recommendation, I think she was spot on. I have during this vlog compared it to other works. I do think that the footnotes and the humor reminds me of the way of Kings with kind of being a future perspective telling the story, but then also having two timelines and stuff reminds me of Eska, and obviously the assassin setting really reminds me of Nona. Um, the companion reminds me of Eska as well in the War Eternal series, and so I definitely would compare it to all three of those. I think she's spot on. If you like any of those, try this one out. If you like this one, try any of them out. I think that Kaylee gave me a really spot on recommendation and I'm so happy I did because I've been putting this off forever and I don't know why. Like, I literally don't know why. It was like meant to make me love it. Like, everything written about this book was probably like screaming casty. Anyways, let's get on to our next read and stop talking about this one as much because I really enjoyed this. I really, really did and I can't wait to get the second book. In editing, however, I did realize I never gave you a synopsis of what Nevernight is about. So Nevernight follows our character, Mia, 
who had something happen to her family and now was on a quest for vengeance. And to do that, she joins the school academy of the god of the mother, who is like a death god, essentially. And there's a lot of like religion in this. And I rewatched Kaylee's clip and she does say like the religion reminds her of Red Sister and I 100% agree. And we just follow Mia graduate essentially she has to get through schooling and we follow her character develop and her quest for vengeance throughout this and i really really enjoyed this one okay so if i'm being honest here something happened to my clip with rye and i don't have it anymore but i do have what she told me to read for it so rye said that since i liked fantasy romance and i liked like serpent in the wings of night and the plot and the romance in that that maybe i will like the never king so that's what i'm gonna be reading um i'm hoping i've heard that there's a good amount of plot in the never king and that's always something i want in my romance so i'm happy i got a recommendation for it for those things yeah let's let's just get right into reading i'm so sorry that i don't have the clip right um that's on me i sorry <laughs> i'm on chapter 14 of the never king i have coffee today which is probably roughly i would say 40 percent in <laughs> and sweet jesus i need mean, jesus okay like there could be a good story in here. I, I do think that there could be a little bit of plot being set up, but the problem is I just do not believe our characters. You're telling me that you have been kidnapped and the first thing you do is try to have sex with them? You know, not, not cry, not deal with your trauma, not bashfully hate them you know, like, enemies to lovers perfect setup here being kidnapped. But no, the first thing you do is go, man, these people make me really wet. The idea of their eggplant entering me is what I need to get out of here. <laughs> I don't know, like, I just, I just, I just am not this person. And you know what, if there are people out there, then <laughs> good for them. But I do not find this believable at all, and it just ruins the story for me. I just, like, I don't know. There's something I'm looking for in my fantasy romance that is not this. I'm looking for fantasy with a little bit of romance, not romance with a little bit of fantasy. And I think that's, like, the biggest difference. This is a story that every chapter, every couple lines, we have just something, like, seeping out sexual tension. We have every couple lines we have a comment being made that has like a dirty meaning to it and I don't want that I'm not here for the smut I'm not here just to see people get on and like I'm not here to like think about someone jerking off to have the next character just jerking off five seconds later and they've never really even talked to each other there's no chemistry nothing like that I am here for a fantasy plot that then builds the romance as you go it builds their chemistry that leads to a peak scene that is smutty and spicy but I don't want there to be smut for smut and that's what's happening in this book um yeah I'm gonna finish it though because I only have like an hour of listening time left so like I need to know what happens and I need to know the like if if we're gonna save Neverland um but I'm definitely hating my time listening to this. <laughs> I need someone to clarify for me because I don't get this love of like smutty retellings. Like when I was watching porn or even before that you know when i was kissing the posters on my wall were you dreaming about peter pan and sh slobbering on his schlong <laughs> because i never did that like who was thinking about these things not me were you and like i mean this honestly like if you were good for you like i was kissing justin bieber posters i have that were on my wall and like i have no ground to stand on like if you <laughs> if you were good for you but i just i don't know it i i i don't get it because i wasn't that girl but i'm also just not like a fairy tale girl at all so like maybe that was just me like i was never dreaming about my prince charming but like peter pan was definitely not my prince charming the lost boys definitely not who i would have been thinking about getting with and so like i just I need to know if there are like if you were I I don't I don't I mean no shame I promise like I I have more shame for things I do and yeah um 
I'm just like, I just don't get this book. I don't get the love of it. I don't, I don't. And like, also like, she keeps being like, they said they don't F darlings before, but they're effing me. Girl, if they stuck their fingers in you two seconds after you got there, better believe that they did the same thing to your mom. Like, <laughs> I don't believe, like, she's not special. Like, no, no. The, the like motives here make no sense to me. Like, if they didn't F other darlings before this, why, why her? Why her? Please tell me because she doesn't do anything. They just look at her once and they're like, I'm gonna break the rules for you because you're so freaking hot and I want those big old biddies on me. Like, what? What? I, I should stop reading beloved smut books because I, I'm not the audience. I'm not the audience. I'm not the audience. I'm not the audience. I finished The Never King and to nobody's surprise after these glimpses, I didn't like it. I'm not quite sure yet if it's getting a one or two stars. I think because it was so short, I didn't hate my experience so much so it might get a two star over a one star. But let me tell you, this book wasn't good. Um, I think Rai gave it to me because of the plot. Um, and I, <laughs> I get it. I, I kind of do. Like, there is the starts of a plot. Like, we are saving Neverland, but we have a problem, we're told. A whole lot of sex scenes and then magically problem fixed. There's no working to, to get to the plot. Like, I was just told that the plot happened, essentially, but like, I feel like the payoff isn't there. Like, I wouldn't call it a book with plot, but I have read worse smut. Like, I have, I have read books with less plot than this, but like, it's not a strong plot. Like, the plot almost feels like an afterthought. <laughs> when the real objective of this book was to bang the Lost Boys as many times as you wanted. And you know what, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. There is a lot of people who love this book, a lot. I am the minority here, but I just, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I want plot. I want a good plot. Honestly, the more romance I read, the more fantasy romance specifically I read, I've learned I really like a slow burn. I honestly don't want smut on page until probably about the last 70%. I want the build up, I want to feel a strong connection, I want to feel a strong bond, which means a novella like this just doesn't work for me when the smut starts in a matter of minutes. I want characters to feel real to me and I just don't believe that when you've been put into this position, when you've been kidnapped, when you've been forced to be here, your first instinct is to sleep with people. I would have liked a little bit more raw grief, raw trauma that we saw. Even if she did sleep with someone right away in order to try and escape, I would have liked to see some of the trauma that that does, some of the reasonings why, the grief that she has for doing that. I think these are real problems because I do think that you could sleep with your kidnapper thinking that they would let you out. But I don't believe that there wouldn't be some kind of repercussion, some kind of strong, hard feelings that you would have to deal with doing those things. And I feel like we got none of that, which is just not the purpose of this book. I am not the reader for this book and I know that. <laughs> Rai had the hardest job because we have the least in common, I think, out of anyone. And the ones we do have in common are often fantasy recommendations that come from me to her to read because she reads a lot more whimsical fantasy and stuff. So it's harder because she has less of a pool to choose from where it's really easy for someone like Mel, who we have so much in common, for someone like Kaylee, who we have so much in common, and even for Lexi, who at least has a whole genre that I really enjoy and I'm trying to get into where like romance is so hit or miss for me and whimsical fantasy is just a no for me that Rai just had like such a hard job. So like I can't, I understand why she recommended this one to me, but do I think it hit the mark for a one-on-one -on -one comparison? No, but I do think if you're looking for a smutty book, you could like this one. Hello, thank you for asking me to be a part of this, even though it is very scary. I still don't know your taste in horror books. I don't get it. I'm still trying to figure it out. Me so too. So because you have liked Sour Candy by Keelan and Patrick Burke, I am going to recommend We Need to Do Something by Max Booth the Third. Here's the thing. I know you gave this three stars. So anywhere in that range for We Need to Do Something is a win for me. I would love it if you liked We Need to Do Something, but my main goal is just for you to say that these are good recommendations for each other. Okay, bye. 
I'm really excited to read We Need to Do Something. During Realmathon, this was one of Lexi's host picks and people in the comments were reading it and loving it. So I'm really hoping that I will be one of those people that also loves it. Sour Candy was weird and it was cosmic horror. Sour Candy is a book that I gave three stars at the time of reading it. I actually read it for Realmathon last year, so I thought that was kind of fun. And the more I think about this book, the more I liked it. At the time of reading it, I did see some flaws in it, so I gave it three stars. But I think looking back on it now, it's probably more like a four star for me, but I don't change my ratings because obviously I'm just like forgetting what I disliked about it. And my overall enjoyment. So it is a book I recommend quite a bit. So I'm excited to see this comparison. I'm excited to hopefully love a story that Lexi loves. Just like Lexi said, I'm trying to learn my horror taste. I'm like, I'm just all over the place with horror and I would really like to understand a little bit more about my horror taste, but we will see if this is the book to do it. I think it might be too windy for me to be out here, but I don't want to be stuck inside. So I'm hoping you can just like kind of hear me. I started We Need to Do Something for this vlog, and so far I'm really liking the setup. It's enjoyable. I kind of, I love an isolated setting through the four of them stuck in a bathroom is kind of just like doing it for me. And I think there's like a little bit of mystery. So there's like an intrigue as to like what the daughter has going on. So I'm definitely invested and intrigued by it. And I am going to finish it today. Okay. Script is calling it chapter 11. Wind, calm down. You don't need to be so windy. Script is calling it chapter 11. But my Kindle is saying page 41 because there's no like chapters in the Kindle version. Um, and I am so intrigued at this point. If you don't know, We Need to Do Something is a book that follows our family that there's a tornado and they're stuck inside the bathroom together as the tornado's going on. Now, Lexi compared it to Sour Candy for me. And like, I, le I loved Sour Candy. So I'm going to like this one because of elements. So I'm expecting this to get really, really, really weird. I already do see a comparison because we have like the isolated setting that I feel like we also get in Sour Candy in the house. But obviously we do have more characters in this one. But I'm expecting this to get odd and I'm just waiting for it. And I'm really intrigued with how it's going to get odd. And I don't know, I'm enjoying this a lot so far. So this is so far a win. Uh, I hope I continue to love it. I finished We Need to Do Something. And Lexi is never gonna give me a recommendation ever again. Not after this and not after book two, Bestie. Because just, she's gonna retire, she's not doing it. I know, I know, but I'm so sorry because I ended up giving this book two stars. However, when I asked my friends to do this and they asked me if it would be a competition, I told them not really, but that I would judge you because I'm me based on how well of a comparison you did. And personally, I think Lexi's comparison was spot on. Like A plus 100% for your comparison, Lexi. So you can still recommend me books in the future because I 100% understand why if you liked Sour Candy, you could like We Need to Do Something. But me as the very specific logical reader that I am, I really enjoyed the first 60% of this story. And here's the thing, why I enjoyed it is because I was intrigued to find out the mystery. And right there is why I didn't like it. Because as you get towards the ending, you were never given an explanation for things. It's left very ambiguous and that just didn't work for me. I lost my interest when I realized I'm not getting answers and I don't actually know what's going on. And it just annoyed me so much that I didn't know what was going on in the story. And, and that's a me thing. That, that's a me thing, not a book thing. I am not the reader for this book, even though I 100% think that if you liked Sour Candy, you could like this. But Sour Candy had more of an explanation. Things were still ambiguous and weird and left untold, but things were also still explained, where in this one, it's kind of left to your own interpretation, and I don't like that. I want to be led to answers. So that's why I didn't like it. And I would recommend this to people who liked Sour Candy. So like I'm 100% on board with Lexi's reasoning for recommending it to me. So I hope that she doesn't feel bad giving it to me because I think that there was a very big chance of me liking it. As I said, the first like 60% of this book, I really, really loved. So um, yeah, hopefully we have better luck with the next book. But yeah, I'm sorry, Lexi, but also A+. You still get an A+. So there you go.
Okay, I do know that Mel sent me two recommendations. I'm only going to be choosing one, but she sent me two because I wanted at least one fantasy book in the video. And she told me she had a non-fantasy and a fantasy, but she was more confident in her non-fantasy pick. And I said that if she didn't mind to send me both and depending on what everyone else picked for the video, so I'm doing Mel last, I would pick her fantasy if no one else picked a fantasy just because I knew I wanted a fantasy. Hi friend, so I'm slightly terrified to film this clip because I don't want you to judge me. Like I don't want you to dislike the book and I don't want you to judge me. But you have asked me I'm for a recommendation judging. of if you liked this, try this. I'm not very good at these, but we're gonna attempt it. So my first recommendation, and you can pick between these two, is if you liked From Below, then try Dead Silence. So hear me out. Okay. I don't even think I need to read the fantasy one because one, I already know that there are fantasies in this video, but two, because she's comparing from below. I love from below. I own it. Here we go. There's dead silence. Let's continue. From below follows a group of people that are going to investigate this kind of sort of cruise ship, but not really a cruise ship. It's more just a ship that was carrying civilians and passengers. And then it wrecked and was gone for hundreds of years before they just happened to come upon it. Now they're going to go investigate this ship and bad things are starting to happen. We have a flashback timeline and a present timeline. So I think that if you liked that of From Below, then you could like Dead Silence because Dead Silence is actually kind of From Below set in space. It follows a group of people that come upon the this cruise ship, like spaceship, that disappeared thousands of years ago. Nobody knew where it was, nobody knew what happened, and they've decided to investigate and try to loot everything for themselves. It has a past timeline, it has a present timeline. The horror elements in these two are pretty similar. I do think that this one is a tad more like mysterious than what you get in From Below, but if you liked From Below, then I definitely think that you could like Dead Silence. It's a very similar concept, a very similar structure, but in space. The other recommendation is one that I am even less confident that you will like. Okay, I'm picking Dead Silence. Like I am picking Dead Silence, um, especially because Mel is more confident on it. It just makes more sense to do that comparison. She's confident I could like it. Um, I picked this up when I read Into the Drowning Deep and then also read From Below because I realized I kind of liked sci-fi horrors and I just had heard good things about this. I'm really excited to try it. I don't know much about it other than what Mel just told me because I like to go into my horror a little bit more blind than I like to go into my fantasies, but I'm really excited to see if this compares and if I like it, I hope I do. I've also heard the audio is really good. Hello, uh, we are camping. We're at Nick's Lake property, so I'm about three days in, which means I really need a shower, but that's what camping's about. I'm about 120 pages into Dead Silence, and so far, I 100% agree with, like, Mel's comparison. This feels like From Below. The pacing is quite similar. We have, like, the similar, like, thrilling aspect of, like, the unknown and, like, the bodies, and we also have the thrilling aspect of, like, the atmosphere that could kill you, so I definitely see a lot of comparisons. I'm really liking it. But, however, I do think From Below worked for me a little bit better, at least so far. From Below, I was very, like, I couldn't put it down. I was very addicted to the story, even though it was slow at times. I was intrigued at all times. This one, there's something about the writing style that just doesn't vibe with me quite as much. I think I find the writing style very descriptive. Uh, we are very, like, focused on how things look, things like that. And that's just something that I don't really like to be heavy in my books. Like, I... I don't really care about the wall color um and there's been like we've described what every like character looks like and things like that and that doesn't really like i don't care if they have blonde hair or red hair um so like that's just something that's not working as well for me it's making it a slower read for me because like i'm having to force myself not to like skim past all these things because it's like i want to because i don't care about it but like i want to get the full story all of that stuff but so far i'm still liking it and i definitely see the comparison i'm hoping to finish it today but i probably won't update you but i probably won't update you till i'm done uh because it's just gonna get worse from here in the camping vibes okay we're at nick's lake and this is what i have to climb up to to get to my bed it's up there i have to climb up this dingy little ladder every single time and i don't like ladders i don't like heights but 
that's where I got to sleep. It scares me every single time I go up. Um, let's go up. I remember the first time Nick told me I'd have to do this. I almost cried. I think I did cry, actually. And I go up. So dingy. And one stair at a time. And always holding on. And then you're up here. And there's my beer. It's a little swordfish. And this is where we sleep. But ta-da. I made it up. Safe and sound. I have to pee in the middle of the night. I gotta go down there. So peeing does not happen. I finished Dead Silence while I was away. I flew through this book. I will say it's like a really, really easy read. I have my llama and space bookmark. I enjoyed a lot of it, but I did end up just giving it three stars. Now Mel compares this to From Below and that's why she gave it to me. And again, another incredible comparison. I 100% agree. If you liked From Below, you could like Dead Silence. There is, and I did like Dead Silence, and I liked the same elements of From Below. I personally think From Below did it better, but I really do see the comparison. I think specifically I would go the other way, and if you like Dead Silence, read From Below. We have two timelines going on throughout the story. We have the timeline of us following the crew as they find this abandoned spaceship and have to figure out what went on with it. And then we also follow our survivor, who can't remember what went on throughout the time that she was on the spaceship and she's talking to an investigator and they're trying to figure it out. I really liked the first half of this book. I really liked where it was going. I liked the creepy, creepy atmosphere it set up, but the latter half kind of let me down a little bit. It skipped over the parts that I really wanted. I wanted to see the characters go insane. I wanted to see the slow, mayhem that happened on the ship. I wanted to see them spiral on the ship and instead we skipped past that part and that really affected my enjoyment because like I feel like I didn't get to see what actually went on to our characters. I just got to like see them overcome it or whatever you want to call it. Where From Below does that spiral so well. We see that con them continually spiral more and more and more into insanity <laughs> at times and I really wanted that. I wanted more of the spooky atmosphere that space can give you. I loved the atmosphere in From Below of underwater. We have this tank, our oxygen's running out. It just felt so stressful in From Below, and I think at times I got that stressful bit of dead silence, and at times I did get that in dead silence, but most of it I didn't. I would have liked things to be kept in more of a space atmosphere, I think, in order to give me a little bit more of that stressor, just another thing counting down. I personally did really enjoy this. I really liked the characters. I liked the explanation. I know a lot of people didn't from reviews, like people who didn't like the book didn't love the romance or the explanation, and I didn't mind either of those things. Yes, I feel like the romance is random, but it made motives make more sense for me, so I did enjoy it and I didn't mind the explanation. I wish it had kind of been a little bit more set up. There's a comment really early in the book about botanical gardens and I kind of wish that had had something to do with the explanation. Just like I wish it was more set up earlier on in the story than it, it felt like to me. But overall I had a really good time with this. I did enjoy this story. I thought that it had really interesting ideas and concepts. I will definitely be reading the new book by this author, but it's definitely not as good as From Below or Into the Drowning Deep for a sci-fi horror. But it definitely has me wanting to continue gravitating towards sci-fi horrors and wanting to read more of them. So I do think that this was a really good pick. I think that this is a pretty strong comparison. If you liked one, you probably will like the other. Yeah, those are my final thoughts on Dead Silence. Uh, if you liked From Below or Into the Drowning Deep, please pick this up. And if you liked this, please pick up From Below or Into the Drowning Deep. All three are incredible sci-fi horrors that give you, like, stress. <laughs> and I completely forgot to film an outro for this video. So here I am in post-processing filming you an outro. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you liked this video, if you liked this type of like, if, if since I liked this, read this, recommendations with other booktubers. I want to do it again. I really liked it and I think that we had a lot of wins during this. Like almost every single book, sorry Rai, I 
understood the comparison for and I thought that was a lot of fun to see and I really really liked reading these books looking for these comparisons even when I didn't like love the book. I just had a lot of fun with it so let me know down below if there's any other booktubers you would love to see me do this with and if you enjoyed this just let me know please. Thank you so much to Rye, Lexi, Kaylee, and Mel for doing this and picking books for it. I know it was stressful and then if you'd like to leave me an emoji just to say you were here today leave me a hand emoji some sort of hand and then if you want to connect with me on other platforms, my bookstagram, my book Twitter, my Goodreads, and my Patreon are all linked in the description bar below. Thank you guys so much. Have an absolutely remarkable day.